let's jump right in. Why bother learning formal languages? So I'll start with a motivating example. The other day I had an experiment that had spat out a file that had something on the order of 150,000 lines in it. And each of the lines had somewhere in that huge chunk of text uh, a string that looked like this. A key that said the training error and a value after it that was a floating point value. And I wanted to find out, find all of the, count all of the lines where the value here was less than 0.7. So I could have put this incomplete uh, file with some errors in it um, through some sort of library to try and fix things up and then eventually load it in. But I decided to treat it as a string recognition problem because what it really is is I have here a set of text and I need to recognize where I see something that looks like this and where the string after it represents a floating point number less than 0.7. So what I did is I pulled out my terminal and I typed the following line, nice and simple. And that spat out exactly the number of lines that I needed without me doing any sort of programming or coding or anything myself. Now the key part here is I'm not going to explain how this works. For those of you who know grep, you'll probably understand this very quickly. But the key part here is the bit in blue. That is a pattern. And by typing using a particular language of patterns, I was able to type this incredibly simple pattern in, and it spat out for me exactly what I needed. Excellent. So we now have tools which can tell us when we've got strings that match certain patterns, and we can write those patterns down simply without having to rewrite the code ourselves every time. So here's a few examples of some of these patterns, and they're called regular expressions, which you'll learn about later. But here on the left, we've got one that is the set of strings which are A's and B's that have an even number of letters in the string. And down on the bottom right we've got a different one which represents a, a set of strings with A's and B made up of A's and B's that have an odd number of A's. Excellent. So the, the, the point to think about here is we've now got something which can recognize sets of strings. But isn't English just a set of strings? French just a set of strings? If we're able to write down these simple patterns to recognize sets of strings, why are Google and others running around using incredibly powerful and complex machine learning methods and still struggling to correctly identify and understand the meaning behind English text? Well, the answer is that the set of strings that we can recognize using the patterns that I have just mentioned before is an incredibly small set of strings. And one of the things you'll learn is that English is not one of those sets. You'll learn a lot in this course about the complexity of recognizing different languages. And you'll realize very quickly that whilst we can solve some problems like the, the one I gave you before, recognizing floating point numbers less than a certain value very, very easily, some other problems are much, much more difficult and in some cases not even possible. So to finish, I'll give an idea of some of the applications of some of the models and concepts that you'll learn in this course. So the first and most obvious one is the, that many of the hardware controllers that you see are modeled as finite state machines, which is one of the first concepts you'll learn here. You'll also learn that that concept can be extended out to what's called a hidden Markov model, which is a very common representation in artificial intelligence particularly in the uh, computational biology side of things. Some of the other less concrete uh, benefits that you'll get from this is some mathematical models of modern computers. Um, and finally, you'll end up with some proofs that we can't solve everything. So I hope what I've given you here is a bit of a jumping off point. So that in six and seven weeks when you're wondering, why are we learning this? How does this possibly relate? You'll, you'll have somewhere to start when you figure out what aspects of computer science, software engineering, computer engineering you care about and whether or not there are parts of this course's material that may help you understand more deeply those other areas that you care about.